Hello there again, minions. It's the wheeziest. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about Forza Motorsport. The new Forza game that doesn't have a number conspicuously compared to other Forza games. Why? Because it's going to be a game as a service, which I think actually for Forza is going to be a fantastic thing. So in this video, I want to talk to you about some good stuff about Forza, some bad stuff, Maybe it'll give you some input on whether or not it's something you want to check out if you're a sim racing fan or not. I mean, it's a good racing game across the board, especially if you use some of the assists, but let's just talk about the game, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and show you some pretty little car porn uh, in the background as well. So the first and most important thing to talk about with the Forza game, how's the driving? It's a sim racer. The driving feels great in Forza. Like, it controls the way you'd expect for like a sim racer if you're a sim racing fan you know what i mean if you're not necessarily a sim racer it'll be a little bit more intense if you're maybe a fan of like forza horizon or like need for speed or something like that this may not necessarily be in your wheelhouse because a racing game like this is primarily about understanding the physics of how the car handles understanding the fundamentals of racing lines you know being a car driver and a race and a race car driver so that's part of what i love about it it's very uh, exacting it's a skill that you can develop that actually does translate in the real world when you're out driving on the real roads so the driving in forza feels amazing the sound is similarly amazing i was immediately impressed by the sound in this game I think one of the main things that really caught my attention early on is the sound of the skittering tires as you're uh, cornering, especially if you don't, you know, if you got maybe like uh, anti-lock brakes or uh, you're on a car that has maybe not the stickiest uh, tire compound, like maybe not racing tires, but just kind of road tires. And you've got that response of not just the sounds of the engine um, and the sounds of the, you know, tires squealing as you're cornering, but things like... Uh, the turbo hiss and uh, and exhaust pop and just all those really cool car guy sounds that are so fantastic. The audio quality uh, in this game is just fantastic. The graphics are similarly really great. Um, not amazing. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about graphics in the bad section, but overall Forza is not an ugly game. I have been playing it on the middle setting, so it has a performance setting. It has a performance ray tracing setting, and then it has a quality setting. Um, so I'll save further comments on that towards kind of the bad section, but I will say that what you're going to see in this video is going to be on the performance ray tracing setting, um, which is not the highest quality setting, um, but I think it looks great. Um, we'll talk about uh, some of the drawbacks. It's, it, okay, here's the spoiler. I don't think it looks as good as Gran Turismo 7. That's, I mean, let's just be honest, this is the comparison, maybe maybe it's because of me, because I'm a console guy, and when you're talking about console sim racers, it's Gran Turismo, or it's Forza. It just is what it is, that's where the comparison's gonna draw. I love both of those games, for the record. Um, matter of fact, currently I think there are a lot more drawbacks to Gran Turismo, primarily around its predatory uh, microtransactions. Um, we're not gonna talk about it in this video, because this is not a Gran Turismo video, but let's just say... Forza looks great, doesn't look quite as good as Gran Turismo in my opinion, but that doesn't mean it looks bad by any means. Uh, so let's get into kind of the meat of where I've seen the discourse around Forza, and rightfully so, the core gameplay loop and the systems of the game. In my opinion, the car ranking and race series structure of Forza is actually really great. I've, the most criticism I've seen for Forza is the way they've kind of RPG'd uh, the cars in that you uh, basically level them up, not ba basically, you literally level them up over time and as they increase in level, you unlock the ability to customize more parts and upgrade more parts on them. Um, and you earn car points that you can then use to select those upgrades and try to fit them into the performance ratings for the series that you're in. Um, 
I've seen some criticism about that versus, hey, if I've got a million dollars sitting in the bank and I brand and buy a brand new car and I want to immediately sink 300 grand worth of parts into it like you could in previous Forza games or like you can in Gran Turismo and say, hey, I bought this new, you know, B-level car and I want to make it A-level immediately so that I can use it in this series, um, you can't really do that. But I'm, I'm enjoying that and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, why? But... Uh, let's talk through some of these other points. So one of the things that's cool about the this the term that I've used, I didn't watch a lot of the uh, Forza marketing, um, but I've heard people refer to it, so I'm assuming it was true, is that they're kind of sticking to the concept of built, not bought, where you kind of are building these cars, earning them, ranking them up over time. I actually really like that. It, it feels like I'm being connected to the car and I'm am building it like I'm actually using the car becoming more familiar with it and as I become more familiar with driving it I can upgrade it and make it better this is something in Gran Turismo where I've actually lamented a little bit and even gone out of my way to kind of enforce on myself I will oftentimes buy a car and just immediately throw racing slicks on it and maybe you know performance brakes and maybe an upgraded suspension or some weight reduction just because I know that that's immediately gonna make the car way better the downside of that is is a lot of times I feel like those cars are, I don't want to say disposable, but it feels like I don't have a connection to them, and I don't even sometimes quote-unquote meet those cars. Part of this being a sim racer is each car has its own kind of personality around its drivetrain, its weight, its suspension, its power, and when you immediately apply these performance-enhancing upgrades to a car, the moment you buy them, before you even take them out on the track, um, I think you lose some of that connection with the character of the car. I think back to like the, the days in the uh, original uh, Gran Turismo games. Uh, the car that always jumps out in my mind is the, the TVR Cer Cerberus was appropriately named because it was a monster to drive. It was, it was a rear wheel drive beast that had a shit ton of horsepower and, and the weight distribution wasn't fantastic so it was so easy to spin in the corners. If you were turning and you got on that gas like it would just just kick those tires out and and it just had this I always remember this car as this absolute beast and when I've been watching even very recently in videos like on YouTube uh, from like car content producers uh, there was a video just a couple of weeks ago from like Drive Tribe or something like that and they were talking about the old TVRs and how that is very much how they behaved right they were very like monstrous uh, visceral machines um, that could be really hard to control so that carried through in the game and I remember that about the car that's one of the things that's so cool about playing sim racers is you don't have the ability to drive these hundred thousand dollar two hundred thousand million dollar uh, hyper cars um, but in a sim racer not only do you get to drive them but you also get to kind of experience what it's like to actually be in them. If they're rear wheel drive with a lot of power, um, they can be very squirrely and hard to control and they demand a lot of skill from you as a driver. Whereas if you've got a, you know, a, a four wheel drive Subaru with like 270 horsepower, you can hustle that around pretty safely. It's not, it's not super dangerous. Um, I think that's lost a lot in a game where you can just immediately take a really high end car, throw super sticky tires on it and kind of not not meet that car um, so I actually am really enjoying that aspect of leveling the car up over time like the first things that I tend to spend my money or spend my car points because it's not even money really for those upgrades spend my car points on is uh, upgrading the tires um, whether it be wider tires stickier tires upgrading the suspension upgrading the brakes um, because those immediately make those cars perform better even before you start touching things like horsepower um, and so, yeah, I really am enjoying that aspect of learning the cars, uh, building them up. Um, it also makes me feel okay losing races, right? I join a race series, and one of the cool things I like about it, we'll talk about the race series structure too. When you start the race series, there's a list of cars essentially that are allowed in that series. There's also a performance, a max performance rating that you can uh, have them upgraded to. So maybe you're bringing in a car you already own and you've already got it really upgraded. So it does have that limit still if you've already got all the upgrades for it. 
But otherwise, you're starting from scratch, which I'm really enjoying because I'm still pretty early in the game. You basically start a new race series, you buy a new car for it. We're like, okay, for this race series, I'm gonna choose, you know, the, uh, the, the you know, this new Ferrari. I'm a big Ferrari fan, right? And it starts out at whatever its base level is, and that's probably not as good uh, a level or as high a performance rating as even other cars in that series. Um, and so, if you just take it right in there at a you know a standard difficulty, I've been playing most of the game on the uh, Drive Atar difficulty level five which feels like a good balance between, you know, kind of challenge, but I also don't have to be like perfect. Um, but at that difficulty, it doesn't mean I'm gonna win every race. And I like that because it doesn't feel like I'm punished. In Gran Turismo, for instance, because, you know, that's that natural comparison, there is a huge difference between the amount of money you get if you get first place or second place or third place or lower. So in that game, it feels like if you don't win, you are giving, being given a big penalty. And that bonus, your win-loss bonus, doesn't, you don't get more money in Gran Turismo if you race on a higher difficulty, right? So it's not like risk versus reward. You get the same amount of money for getting first place on easy as you do on expert. And so there's almost no reason to race on anything other than easy because if you're rating on a, racing on a difficulty where you may or may not win the race, you're losing a lot of your potential money, which is how you buy new cars and perform upgrades, right? Because you have to buy parts in Gran Turismo versus using car points in Forza. Um, so I like that in that there's not a huge penalty for losing. There is, you know, a, a difficulty bonus. So if you're racing on a higher difficulty, you get a little bit of extra credits, um, depending on where you finish. And your overall cash reward for where you finish on the grid isn't a huge part of your total uh, money that you win, right? So instead of getting like zero dollars if you get fifth place or something like that, or like fifty thousand dollars if you get first, if you get first, you know, you get like thirty-five thousand. If you get like fifth, you get like thirty thousand when you count in your like difficulty modifiers and stuff like that. So you can come in third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and not feel like you're missing out on the precious money that you need to be able to experience the game and buy new cars. And as you level up um, your driver level, not just your car level, you also get cash rewards. And then when you, you know, place in the series, you get cash bonuses. So I haven't really been paying attention to how much money um, I've been getting per race or per series. And I've just been naturally earning hundreds of thousands of dollars. So when I start a new series, I can typically buy the car that I want for that series and I don't have to worry too much about the money. So from that standpoint, it's a lot of fun buying the cars that I want and not feeling like I have to grind a dozen races to do that or feeling like if I get second place, I just lost 40% of my total uh, money that I was gonna make in that race. So it makes me want to put it on easy and makes me wanna make sure that I definitely get first every time, which from a racing standpoint is less fun. From a driving standpoint, you're still getting that experience of basically lapping the track but ultimately, most of the races in Gran Turismo for me tend to feel like a time trial because I really want that reward of that money because I need to buy the car, because I want to buy these cars. And uh, again, not gonna talk about the predatory uh, pricing and, and uh, microtransactions in Gran Turismo, but let's just say in Gran Turismo, you really need money. And so Forza allows you to actually race. And if you come in third or second or fourth or fifth or sixth, you don't feel like you failed, you feel like you were actually racing um, because you're building up your car, you're still improving it. Um, just overall, I really love that. I love that aspect of the game. Um, so yeah, I won't dwell on that necessarily anymore. I think I've made my point. The core gameplay loop of Forza is really fun for me right now uh, because of those aspects. Um, the practice sessions that you go through before races, I actually really enjoy because I've talked about this before in like my Gran Turismo videos or some, you know, just in general. I'm not necessarily r spending hours and hours and hours and hours and hours racing around every single track a dozen times. And there's a lot of tracks in these games. And yet to really get familiar with them, you know, you, you need to lap them. Professional racers spend hours and hours on each track, um, even the week when they're racing there, right? They'll have multiple days of multiple hours of practice before they even go to qualifying and then they'll qualify before they even go to the race so 
unless you want to be a real life race car driver and before you go to any race in the game you want to spend three or four hours or something like that really lapping the course in that car that you're going to use and really learning it having a practice mode where it's like hey do two or three laps uh get familiar with the course um, and it also checks your lap time against basically the difficulty level of the drivers you're going to be driving against, um, if they're computers, and says, here's about how you're going to rank up lapping where you are now um, versus this difficulty level. And it says, hey, if you are, if this is as fast as you're lapping, then you're not going to finish very high, so turn the difficulty down, right? It'll let you also select your grid position, which is super cool. Um, I wish you could kind of toggle it on and off. There's a part of me that still really wishes you could do where your qualifying lap determines your grid position. Um, I, 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 cause that's real racing. But this basically says, here's what your qualifying laps were. Um, you can use this to determine where you'll end up in the field. And if at this difficulty level, you're only, you know, gaining a half a second or, or, or a second over the fastest, next fastest car, then maybe you want to start as far up as, uh, I think it'll let you start up, start up as far as third or fourth. I forget exactly where. You can't put yourself in pole. Um, but if you're on an easier mode and you want to pass everyone, you can start at the back of the grid. Um, and you'll get a small bonus in money for that. Not big enough to really matter, which is good because it gives you that flexibility to feel like, okay, I need to start earlier in the grid or I want to start later in the grid for a challenge. And you're going to lose like $1,000, right? It's not going to be like 50% of your total um, winnings. So I really like that aspect of it too, where you can determine how to scale your difficulty. You get a little bit of warm up on the track before the race, um, and that's all really great. It's important to note that that is optional. When you automatically get put into that practice session, but you can immediately pause and quit and say, okay, I don't wanna do practice and jump into the race. I've seen people complain, I don't like practice sessions. You don't have to do them. You can just skip through them. Yeah, it's a couple extra button presses, but personally, I love the practice sessions. I really don't like in Gran Turismo, that I'm always put in last place in a rolling start with no warm up every time I join an event. I, I go, I'm going into it with a huge challenge ahead of me. I got to pass everyone on a track that I'm cold on. That's not, that's not an ideal experience for me. The game is kind of assuming that you need to know these tracks ahead of time before you're doing the events. That's not necessarily how I want to spend my time with this. Your mileage may vary depending on how much time you want to spend learning the tracks before you go to three events. Anyway. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the core concept of it. Let's see what else. Um, I like that the it keeps track of like your sector scores and your personal bests for those sectors. It gives you feedback on your overall racing line and the progress of how you're ranking up your car. How well you do the racing line, how well you complete sectors, also is what determines how quickly you rank up the cars. So there's a very real connection between getting better at driving in this game and seeing actual advancement in the game, seeing your cars improve, getting more rewards, like, and there's the serotonin hit of uh, it popping up uh, as you're driving and being like, dude, that was a great sector. That sector was a perfect 10. Like you, you hit the apex and you accelerated out perfectly. Like, it's just like, great job. Like that feedback, I actually really enjoy. Um, so yeah, th those things about Forza are really cool and make me really enjoy the game. I touched on this a little bit before. I love that in Forza the car prices are reasonable across the board and not predatory. So I went and looked through, because I'm a Ferrari guy, and I looked through the Ferraris that are available in Forza. They're all available right out of the gate. They all cost, you know, I think basically less than 400 grand. Most of them are right around in the 300 grand range um, or less. But that is a stark difference from, say, uh, Gran Turismo, where they've uh, locked a lot of the higher-end cars behind. You have to, like, get wheel spin unlocks to get invitations to buy the highest-end cars, and they cost $2 million or $3 million. Or you have to wait for them to show up in the used car dealership or in the legendary dealership. And then rare cars cost, yeah, literally millions and millions of dollars. So, for instance, if I want to drive the Ferrari FX FXXK, in Gran Turismo, I have to drive it enough to get enough wheel spins to happen to get lucky enough to get an invitation from the game based on RNG to get an opportunity to buy that car, in which case it gives me 30 days to earn whatever the two or three million dollars I need to buy the car, and then I'm allowed to buy the car. In Forza, 
it's got a list of Ferraris. They all are relatively affordable in price. Like I said, the most expensive one, a Ferrari FXXK. I could go right now into Forza and pay 350 grand or something like that and drive a Ferrari FXXK. Like, that is a so much better experience. This is how all these racing games used to be. So that's why I say the real criticism is of Gran Turismo 7's predatory pricing. Um, Gran Turismo games never really liked that before. Yes, there were expensive cars and million dollar cars, but they weren't time boxed and locked behind all this bull crap. Um, Forza, you've got a menu of cars to choose from, whatever you like. If you've got the money, you can go buy it. You will earn money regularly. You don't have to grind for it. Just play the game, have fun, and you will be able to buy the cars that you want. I've always loved that about Forza. Forza Motorsport is absolutely no different. And because it's this now game as a service, they're gonna keep adding new cars. They're gonna keep adding new tracks. Like, So the, the future, for Forza Motorsport looks really good. It looks like the kind of game that I will be coming back to for years and years because in previous Forza games and even Gran Turismo games, once you knock out the main career races, there's not necessarily, especially for me, like a whole lot to come back to to re-race the same racing series I want to. I want to get more into online racing, but that's always been a little bit toxic too because I want to lap um, relatively realistic because it's a sim racer and you inevitably will end up in races with people who will just slam you off the track there are a lot of mechanisms in place to try and discourage that or punish people for doing it, but it happens. And there's nothing fun about jumping into a race and getting four laps into a five lap race and having some asshole wait too long to break into a corner and knock you off the course and then you lose six positions. Even if they get punished, you don't get those positions back, right? Like, And yes, okay, that's like real racing, but whatever. The point being, replayability in these games in the past has always been very limited once you've completed the primary, you know, career missions or whatever they have available for you. Um, so Forza as a service is something I'm really looking forward to. Even uh, in Gran Turismo 7 recently, they've added a smaller number of events um, with some of their major updates. They recently added like a Turbo uh, Cars event, which added like three new race races into the game for new car lists, which was, hey, that was cool, but then I knocked it out in like an hour and I was done. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to that with Forza. So I've talked a lot about good stuff in this. So let's talk through some of the bad stuff. Honestly, I won't spend as much time on this for a change. Um, usually spend more time talking about negative things, but they're relatively minor um, for Forza right now. First, new game, there's quite a few bugs. More than I remember there being in previous Forza games or previous Sim Racer games. So this is very much a victim of the maybe pushed out the door a little bit too soon. Um, starting a new race series when it does like the little cutscene intro, in my experience, if it's a, the first time you've seen that for a new race series, it will very often freeze your entire game. You have to kill the entire game uh, to, to, to get through that intro. One time, this only happened to me once, but I had finished a, a race series, I won the series, got my rewards, got my extra points, my ranks for my car. I think I went to the next series, it froze, so I restarted the game. And it had lost my progress from the previous series, so I had to re-race the last race in that series again to complete it, to re-unlock that new series that had frozen the game. But my car rank increases had saved, right? So the extra XP and car points I had earned for that car were there. So I could even upgrade my car and run a better version of that car in the last race of that series than I had when I had completed it before. So that was a weird bug. Um, it was really irritating because I lost progress only happened that one time, but anyway. Um, and one race series I was doing in, in uh, this Ferrari that has a lot of power, I have ABS on in this game, and for whatever reason it either wasn't working or it was in, in a really horrible state where if I barely touched the brake pedal, the car would just absolutely lose control. And I just thought maybe it was this car, maybe it was just this car being really touchy. Um, and I did this for like three or four races um, of it behaving like this, and I was like, man, this is just a pain in the ass. I decided to take a break from that series. I went, backed out, went to a different series, raced in a Subaru for a while, came back to continue you know, the last couple of races of the series, and all of a sudden ABS was working properly again and the car was behaving. So that was definitely some kind of bug, but I have no idea what happened. Sometimes the car just, it, the car just wasn't braking. Anytime I touched the brakes, it would immediately lock up the brakes, even with ABS on, and it would just slide off the track. The damnedest thing, so that's definitely a bug. So there's still some bugs like that in the game that I'm confident will get fixed over time. Um, and they're not, uh, you know, yes, it does freeze up the game a little bit with some of these, but they're not like literally game breaking. It's not like, oh, I don't want to play this game anymore. Um, 
The graphics, let's talk about that a little bit. The quality setting for graphics has on my Xbox Series X, right? I'm not on Series S. But the quality setting for graphics has an unplayably low frame rate. In Gran Turismo 7, I play on quality mode instead of performance mode. And so it's using ray tracing and all that stuff. It looks great, and the frame rate is good enough for me. I don't know if it's at 30 or 60, but it looks nice and it looks smooth. If I put Forza on the best quality mode, the frame rate is low enough that even I can't really stand racing it. It feels stuttery or jittery. It seems like it's got to be, it, it claims to be 30 frames per second, but it looks like it's less. So I couldn't stand it. I wrote, I did like half a race on quality mode. And yes, it looked a lot better, but it ran like shit. And the performance mode that is like four, that is like what, what, like dynamic, whatever. The performance mode that's guaranteed 60 FPS looks last gen, like the, the textures, the quality, it looks like a last-gen game. It looks almost cartoony. Um, so the performance setting is crappy. The quality setting is crappy. The middle setting, which is like dynamic resolution with ray tracing, which is what you're seeing here, what I race in, um, looks great. It's not as good as Gran Turismo, um, not as good as the high-quality setting, but it doesn't look last-gen. It looks nice, and it runs well. So that's all I can say. I, I believe it says it runs at 60 FPS with a dynamic resolution. It looks great. It runs great. Um, but that is a quibble. <laughs> if you want good performance or really good quality, both of those suck. If you're willing for middle of the road, um, then it works great. Um, but yeah, it does. It just, bottom line, does not look as Gran Turismo 7, um, in my opinion. Just doesn't. Uh, what else? Another minor thing um, is the wheel animations inside the car do not match when you're using a real weight racing wheel. I recently got a nice racing wheel that I use, well, two racing wheels. One that I use for Gran Turismo and one for Forza. Um, it's the same wheel base, but different wheel rims for it. Um, but anyway, in Gran Turismo, it matches up one-to-one. -one. When I move the re wheel on the wheel, it matches up with what you see in the game. In Forza, not only does it not match up, like I'll turn the wheel like 45 degrees, and in the game, it animates the wheel being turned like 90 degrees, and it's also the wheel in the game is animated a slight bit behind. So as I turn the wheel in real life, uh, a split second later, it actually happens in the game, which if you're actually looking at that, throws your brain off. So I've had to train myself to ignore the wheel animation because my brain says, wait, the wheels turned hard over, so stop turning. Whereas in real life, I can turn a lot harder on that wheel before I get all the way turned over. And I'm not going to turn off cockpit mode because I like being able to see the cockpit. I wish there was a way to just hide the wheel, but still see the dashboard. There's not, whatever. It is what it is. If you don't use a racing wheel, it won't matter to you, but it's worth talking about. Um, and the other thing is, at first glance, it appears that out of the box, there are fewer racing series than there were in like Gran Turismo, or in like Forza 6 and 7. Uh, I've heard other people complain about that as well, that maybe the, the career races um, there aren't as many as there have been in the past. I, it's too early for that to tell. Um, I'm still going through it. It's taking quite a bit of time to get through these race series. They're like five, six, or seven races per series. So it's hard to tell whether or not the content level out of the box is too low. But like I said, it's a game as a service now. They're adding uh, time-limited series that, that unlock weekly and, and stuff like that. So I'm not super concerned about content, but worth calling out. Okay, I've rambled on about this game for about half an hour. Uh, hopefully there's been enough good-looking gameplay in the background. If you guys have played Forza, let me know what you think. You guys enjoying it, hating it, whatever. Um, if you guys like this video, leave me a like. If you didn't, leave me a dislike. If you're new around here, I, I, I mean, I'm going to try and do more of this. I like sim racers. I'm going to do more content like this. I like shooters. I like, I like good games. If you guys are new around here, subscribe to see stuff from me that's hopefully informative or entertaining or any or both or... <gasps> Whatever, I'll see you guys in the next one.